now oh. um, you guys are sharing where you're from if you see your friends please feel free to say hello to your friends if you see anyone that you know um, we are just welcoming everyone here to have a great evening with us if you're comfortable in your house mm -hmm. please feel free to relax have your cameras on if you do if you want to be seen if you don't it's quite all right and uh, all right, Team Nyman Ranch in the house. Hey, Alicia, we miss, you. we miss your face. <laughs> so we have some great stuff coming up. Uh, as you guys are coming in, I see Celine from Detroit area. Nice to meet you. Uh, we have so many people that we want to thank for this opportunity. We have Nyman Ranch, of course, to thank, and also America's Test Kitchen, our platinum sponsors. So if you're from ATK, please make some noise chat. Let us know that you're in the house. And also, we have some great things coming up. I don't know if any of you were here for Clancy Miller's Legacy Travel and the New Food Media. If you were, please let us know how you felt about that. That was a great interview we had last month. She's such a great person. She taught us a lot about Paris and her journey through just uh, her for the Culture Magazine and also her cooking solo. So please look out for her and more information about her. Uh, also, we have more upcoming events. We have a lot more camps. So please make sure you pay attention to those uh, surveys that we send out so that we have your information. You can join our Slack. We love to chit chat with you and share more information with you on a daily basis. So please look out for all of those things. And also look out for the walk-in podcast that Chef L. Simone Scott has from time to time. It's great inf interview information with other chefs of color that have lots of things going on. So please look out for all of those. Um, also, in June. In June. That's next month. I can't <laughs> believe we're all the way to summer. And this camp in particular is perfect to start your summer off with. So please, if you have a notepad, take some notes. We have some great tips for you and you're not gonna learn these tips from any other butcher, I guarantee you. No one's gonna give you this information that we're gonna share with you tonight. Hands so down, please, we got the best. Please pay attention, we're gonna have some fun. <laughs> it's just gonna be a blast. We've been preparing so completely for you guys to have a good, good evening tonight. So um, with that all said, I wanted to and reintroduce myself. My name is Shamir Ward and I'm co-founder of She Chef Incorporated. And again, we are so, so, so happy to be with you guys tonight. We've been waiting for so long to do this. And now that we're doing it, we got chills. We're just ready to get the ball rolling. So most importantly, I just want to let everyone know who She Chef is if you are new to these events. Now, this is our third event this year, so we are definitely getting the ball rolling and want to do a lot for you guys. So for starters, um, I just want to read this only because we recreated our mission and we want to make sure that everyone is uh, involved and we want to work with everyone as well. So um, she Chef is a professional and educational organization for women identified chefs of color and our allies. Our mission is to bridge the gap of equity and diversity in the food and beverage media and hospitality industries. That might be some of you already online with us tonight. And there might be some of you who want to get started in those industries as well. So it's nice to meet all of you. You have a new family in us. So uh, we want to get this to ball rolling and get the party started. It's Thursday, might as well be Friday. So uh, this is the new weekend. Thursday is the new Friday, especially after all we've been through. So hope you guys had a great week. If you're feeling down, this is the place to be because our chefs tonight are gonna have you just laughing and learning and it's just gonna be so much fun. So, um, and we encourage all of our attendees to say hello. Uh, please share where you are as you've already done and um, please stay on mute so that we can all be heard when it's going to be heard. And also we have a digital event code of content, which, uh, excuse me, code of conduct, which our producer Danny will be dropping in the chat. So she'll also be sharing information throughout the course of the evening, all the things that, well, she's typing right now. So please read those and get to know her as well. She'll just be dropping balls of information here and there. So again, uh, our platinum sponsor, America's Test Kitchen, ATK, if you're in the house, please uh, put in a chat or clap or, you know, do something that would let us know that you're here. <laughs> 
for your support. <laughs> Nine Ranch, our new <laughs> partners. We are so grateful to have you guys on the journey with us. Elle has been working so hard on this project. So thank you so much for your support. And without further ado, the Grand Puba. The <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Shamir. Um, what's so funny is I saw uh, Chef Anita give Chef Michelle the grand poobah. She is the grand poobah of meat today. I am only the grand poobah of introductions. Um, I am so grateful for everyone to be here. Meat Camp um, was an idea that has actually been two years in the making. And just when I was ready to get to a rollout, of course, good old COVID, which we'll just blame COVID for everything. Anything goes wrong, I stub my toe, it's COVID's fault. Um, but uh, I made really good friends with Chef Michelle on uh, some of our uh, women chefs and restaurateur um, journeys and events. And, and we just had a really good rapport. And I felt like we had a, a, an immediate connection. And when I was just, you know, sitting home talking with Danny and my co-founder Shamir and trying to figure out, you know, how can I still make Meat Camp happen? And I reached out to Chef Michelle and she was, I mean, she almost gave an absolute yes. And then, and then she kind of backpedaled and was like, well, well we, we have to do have to ask Nyman first, but I'm going to say I'm in. And, um, you know, we, we made those connections we had those conversations and we are here having me camp today. So I'm extremely grateful. I'm so glad that you all are willing to pivot with me and bring it to the digital space in 2022. It will be in real time. I know that for sure. That is my promise to y'all. Um, so I'm very excited to uh, bring about me camp today. I'm even more excited to introduce to you uh, Michelle Sanchez from Nyman Ranch and Chef Anita Cartagena, who is just the best in the world. One of the most beautiful souls I've ever met. Um, yeah. We have two exciting parts of this event happening today. Um, we have butchering happening first. Uh, Chef Michelle is going to take this piece of meat we have here and show us a million things. Okay, so we rehearsed this, guys. You are not going to believe all the things that you're going to see happen with this meat. It's like magic. Like David Blaine ain't got nothing on Chef Michelle with her knife in this piece of meat. Okay? <laughs> We're about to see some real things go down. Um, after that, after that, Chef Anita is going to take some of these, uh, one of these cuts from this meat. She's going to make an amazing uh, recipe, lomo saltado. I'm extremely excited about it. Uh, it's what I like to refer to as a simple dish with complex flavors. Does that sound about right, Chef Anita? Yes, absolutely. All right, so um, that's how the day is gonna go. We're gonna leave some time for questions and answers. Um, if you have questions throughout, please feel free to put them in the chat. I have some questions here in case you all are feeling a little shy, um, but I would much rather ask your questions to the chef so that you can get everything you came here for. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to um, give you some information, some background story about these lovely chefs we have here today. Um, I'm gonna start with Chef, uh, Chef Anita, who um, after years of working in top kitchens in Chicago, moved to San Francisco Bay Area, where she worked under Chef Dominique Crin, the world's most celebrated female chef, the only woman to earn three Michelin stars. Um, in 2012, Anita moved to the culinary mecca of Yountville, California, um, in the heart of Napa Valley's wine region. If you have never been to Napa Valley, I, I implore you to go. It's the most beautiful place. Yes. Um, it's home of the famed French Laundry, as well as several other world's famous, world famous restaurants. Anita helped, uh, I'm sorry, Anita, pronounce it for me again. Cicio. Chichio. Chichio. Oh, that's even cuter. Chichio <laughs> restaurants in Yountville opened its doors in late 2012. After three years at Chichio, um, Chef Anita discovered a great opportunity to open a restaurant of her own in Yonville. In April 2016, Protea opened its doors, giving Chef Anita the opportunity to become the only female chef owner in Yonville. You go, girl. She finally had the chance to create a Michelin star quality casual dining experience. Protea has received great accolades and reviews from respected publications such as Fedora's Travel, Napa Life Magazine, and Sonoma Magazine as one of the hot spots to visit in the Napa Valley. Anita has made television appearances nationally 
acclaimed shows such as Bob, Beat Bobby Flay on Food Network. Chef, did you beat Bobby Flay? No, unfortunately, I didn't. I he, cheated. he cheated. It was rigged. It was rigged. I know you could rigged. be Bobby Flay yeah. with your eyes closed. He, he, could. he couldn't handle it. He no. couldn't handle it, right? <laughs> um, so uh, while her restaurant closed its doors permanently in 2020 due to strains of COVID, Chef Anita continues to run a successful private event company in Napa Valley, providing intimate dining experiences for guests. Chef Anita's food philosophy is to create food that makes an indelible mark for guests, food memories, feed the heart and soul, so the love just follows. I love that. That's an amazing um, philosophy to have. Um, welcome, Chef Anita, to the She Chef and I'm a Ranch She Cuts Meat Cat platform. Very excited to have you. Um, last but not least, Michelle Sanchez was born and raised in San Francisco and manages Nyman Ranch Food Service for the Bay Area. She worked with the original founders of Women Chefs and Restaurateurs and, and, and was one of the chefs cooking for their inaugural dinner, which was amazing. Uh, Michelle has worked with some of the best chefs in the country, including at the well-known Elka with Tracy Desjardins when seasonal foods were literally at their peak. Names like Elizabeth Faulkner, Dominique, and Michael Leviton, in addition to other great chefs were her peers, are her peers. She also worked as chef at Evia, the best restaurant in Palo Alto for three years in a row. In addition, Michelle is also a certified butcher and one of the only women certified in the union for journeymen. She received a full ride scholarship to U of Florida and was invited to try out for the 1984 Olympics in basketball and played internationally on the U.S. team. I love a, I love a person who can do all the things, Chef Michelle. I didn't know you had such depth to you, girl. We got to get on the court. OK, we got to do that. Um, so, Chef Anita, I'm going to put you in charge to your station. Chef Michelle is going to take over this meat. And uh, we'll see you soon, Chef Anita. Um, okay. Chef Michelle, can you tell me what you're going to do today? Well, yes. Well, first of all, thank you so much. This is just a, a wonderful opportunity. You know, I got big love for you. Thank you so much, you know. Big uh, love. So, yeah, today uh, we're going to learn about the 116A uh, boneless chuckle. Chuck, chuck okay. And all right. The reason why I call it a 116A is because it's it's butcher language. You know, mm -hmm. um, each, each piece of muscle has a particular number. So for all you uh, young chefs out there, uh, for your distributor, you know, you're going to have to learn some of this language because it's universal. So an awesome book that I highly recommend for you to get is this book right here. It's the Meat Buyer's Guide, uh, the North American Meat Institute. And I, that's a good shot right there for the overhead. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So, Come down a little bit. Have, yeah. It tells you all the cuts and everything that you need. Um, it's also a wonderful re reference book as well. So the whole chuck and nothing but the chuck. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I look at this whole beautiful thing and you know, there is so much you can do out of this one particular cut. I, I love this cut. It's one of my one of my favorites because of all the different cuts that we're going to get out of it. Yeah, uh, I'm excited about that. Yeah. So, um, where does this chuck come from? Right is always the the question, the number one question. So, I'm going to bring in Anita Chef Anita here. <laughs> so, this would be an example of where it lies on the on the on the cow even though she's not a cow. So it lies right in between here, you know, right in between uh -huh. the, the ribs and the shoulder blade, thank you so much. And that's where this piece of meat lies. So if you can imagine that this end here, let's see, this goes mm -hmm. up towards the neck. Ah, right. I see. And, well, mm -hmm. and then um, down below here oh, is where on this side, which I'll get to early, uh, uh, next, is that this is actually where the chuck is. <laughs> How many would you like? Uh, 
Or, yes. or I had only said one per person because uh, I had some problems with some people coming so last week when I had extra. One, one moment, Chef Michelle. I just want to take a second to remind everyone to make sure your microphones are muted. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, we got an active community. That's good to know. That's right, of course. We got people in the room. It just happened. Okay, so you were telling me about where the chuck comes from is between the blade and the back, the between the shoulder blade on one side and the ribs on the other, right? Does that sound that, right? That's where that's where it lies. Yeah, that's where okay. it lies. Okay. Okay. So I, I take a look at this and I think you know you can you can roast this whole thing all all on its own, just like this. Mm, you can okay. Completely like smoke it, and, and you know I, it makes awesome baba Uh This whole thing will shred like super nice. How long would that take if we roasted that whole thing? You know, it would take like about four or five hours at least at a slow temperature, almost like a okay. brisket as well, you know, even more so. It can take it. Okay. Um, you know, this is this is a wonderful product. Uh, you know, I'm actually surprised that more barbecue places don't feature this. Mm, so mm -hmm. any of you barbecue folks out there, this might be the next best thing for you guys to have because it yields out so nicely. Not everybody's doing it. You could be like the first almost uh, to have a, a barbecue or a slow smoked uh, chuck. Be wonderful. Okay, so in butcher shops, um, we take this and as you can see here, <clears throat> we would normally just kind of uh, slice it up on the, on the bias here and we would make hot roast. So that's what we're um. doing pot roast would come. You see these large piece of meat in your market? That's where the pot roast would come from. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, it's it's nice. So there's two sections here out of the chuck, okay? So mm -hmm. we have this part right here. So this right here, gang, is called the chuck eye. It's in the center of the meat, and then underneath the nip, which I'm going to separate, this bottom part is the underblade. So I'm going to show you guys uh, right now uh, that I'm going to separate the two. And it's pretty easy. You know, it, it tells you exactly where it wants to cut. So you just kind of follow the seams of it. And you just kind Chef, of pull. Chef, while you do that, I, will, I want to ask you a quick question. What do you look for in a cut of beef? And are there ways to know, like, quality beef just by looking at the meat? Absolutely. Great question. Yes, there is. So what I always look for is for the uh, marbling. You know, uh, marbling is one that you can, uh, has all the wonderful muscle mm -hmm. uh, flavor, the uh, fat flavor in there. And that's a, how, also you can tell how tender it will be by the amount of marbling that's in it. So, mm, you know, okay. if you're able to, to take a good look, it has a, it has a nice red bloom color to it. it. Smells real kind of sweet and fresh. You know, if it smells kind of funky, Maybe not. Don't eat it. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go to the hospital or anything. <laughs> All right. So I'm just, you see how I'm doing here? I'm just, it just releases kind of nicely. I'm just following it. You know, I'm pulling at the same time. I'm just kind of trimming a little bit. And it tells you exactly where it wants to go. That's very cool that it does that. Right, you can just kind of follow that seam and get exactly what you need. Uh, and kind of just taking the tip of my knife and, 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 you know, releasing and pulling. And that's it. Okay. All right. So this is your chuck eye. Your chuck eye roast, the whole thing. Right Very here. nice. Do you this, need to trim any of that fat off? Oh yeah, I'm going to a little bit. And, and oh, okay, by the way, cool. you know, um, nothing goes to waste. Uh, That's you know, right. Um, Diamond Ranch, we, gosh, my, my goodness, we think about everything, every step. We take care of every single thing that we do. We, we think about it. You know, the number one priority is our farmers and our ranchers and our animals, mm -hmm. the land. We, we, we take an account for everything. Um, yeah. you know, we, we don't want to truck all of, all of our 
uh, animals all over the place, you know, we raise them where it's appropriate, where the feed is at. We give them, we give them everything. We give them the best of everything because you know what? They're, they're sacrificing the ultimate, their lives. That's right. That's you know? right. And That's so, right. You know, we, we, we pay big respect to that. And what we do at Nyman is that we give them a life with dignity, with care, with love, mm -hmm. protocols. And so, you know, when I just can't imagine, um, you know, all the all the things that that we do uh, in order for our animals to thrive. So we yeah. actually raise them where it's appropriate, where where they can thrive. And so when when you have that proper protocols and everything, this is the kind of meat that you get. You get awesome meat. And also, you know, you can feel really good about what it is that you're supporting family farmers and ranchers directly. And you can That's feel right. really good about what you're eating because it is the best tasting meat in the world. It well, really I'm is. glad. I'm glad you brought that up because I have some amazing Nyman Ranch facts that actually uh, were huge selling points for me when I decided who I wanted to become meat friends with. Nyman Ranch is a community of over 750 small, independent U.S. family farmers who raise cattle, pigs, and lamb humanely and sustainably to produce the finest tasting meat in the world. And that's, that's no exaggeration, y'all. 100% of Nyman Ranch farms are certified humane and no antibiotics or added hormones are used ever. There's not many people that can use that word ever, but that is how Nyman Ranch gets down. They put their money where their mouth is and that's why we respect them. And before you go on, Chef Michelle, I got one quick question for you. Um, uh, Kaylee wants to know how often should you sharpen your knives? And how often do you sharpen your knives, Chef Michelle? Well, you know what? I always, I always sharpen mine right before I'm going on for my shift. I always take an okay. edge real quick. I kind of take my honer and just kind of realign my molecules a little bit. Otherwise, you know, you start, you, you start and you end your shift with sharpening your knife. You want to make sure your tools are happening so that you are Boom. ready all the time. There it is, Kaylee. Be ready all the time. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Sharpen your knives every single time. Okay, so now we have our two cuts. We have our chuck eye and our underblade. What's right. next? So this here is the chuck eye. And what mm. I'm going to do right now, this is a little butcher uh, trick. I, I, I'm patting it in because right now if it, lays, if it lays flat like this, you see the little angle that's happening here? Mm -hmm. So a little butcher trick, you just kind of, you know, push it in a little bit and, 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 and get it straight. Okay. And Does that work with bellies too? Like if I pat my belly in, will it? <laughs> Maybe. No. Okay. So okay, what I'm here is take like three steaks because when I turn this around, you're gonna see. See, it, it has a little dip in here, and really the chuck eye steaks are right here. Okay. Okay. Right. This is where the money cut, aka Delmonico steaks. All right. And, and, and the reason why they're called the Delmonico is because way back in the day, there was a restaurant, Delmonico restaurant in New York that actually named this particular um, other name for the chuck eye. All right. So what I'm going to do this here is chuck eye steaks. And then uh, I'm also going to cut some uh, beef ribs, beef, like beef country style ribs, and then I'll make a little roast. So those are three cuts that you can get just out of this one piece. Also, wow. for your chefs out there, if you guys want to make a single order of pot roast, I highly recommend the chuck eye because when you tie this whole piece of meat up, okay, and you roast it, it will hold its shape really, really nicely. So you mm. can just have nice little individual portions out of this whole chuck eye. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to, and I'm going to show you how lovely these steaks are gonna look. All right, y'all, don't take your eyes off the screen because this, this is how fast the magic can happen. She's gonna give you three cuts from this one piece. Yeah. So I'm gonna just- I didn't, I didn't even know Michelle's hands could move this fast. It's pretty amazing yeah. to watch. All right. Yes. So chuck eyes. Three okay. Delmonico's, yeah. yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna cut this. And have, these are, I'm going to make um, some nice little uh, country style uh, ribs. 
and you braise these. These get braised. Wow. So country style. Ribs here. This one piece of meat is going to give us dinner for like six days. This is right. Yeah, this you is know, exactly. uh, what's wonderful is that, you know, it, this choice cut that we have right here mm -hmm. has some marbling. Look at all these, the Denver ribs over here, all, all the nice little marbling that we have. And this is just choice. I don't know if you guys can see this marbling. Yeah, that's beautiful. Nice, huh? Yeah, now that's really beautiful. Awesome. And then here, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly tie this in a roast. Okay, while you're doing that, let me ask you a quick question. What yeah. labels or attributes in beef do you look for? Are, are there misleading claims that you don't think are worth the extra cost? Yeah, you know, um, that's a great question. When I was in Nyman Ranch, <clears throat> you know, I, I learned so much from Nyman, okay? Mm -hmm. um, even more so before when I was a chef. And, you know, the things I learned is that there are so many deceiving uh, producers out there uh, that actually, you know, really don't tell the whole whole truth. Mm. What I find on the ranch is that they are all filled with truth. And yeah. that's one of the main reasons why I, 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 you know, I gravitate to them is because, you know, their personal values, their, their values are my personal values. Mm -hmm. You know, integrity is huge. Yeah, so... I would always look for, you're trying to source appropriately. I would always look for, you know, a never ever program, never ever having any type of hormones or, or antibiotics in their system at all. And what a lot of chefs don't know is that there's a withdrawal program. And a withdrawal program is, is that, and this is all, you know, okay by the government. This is a big old loophole. Mm -hmm. And then, actually do administer the hormones and the antibiotics in the animal. They wait till the animal flushes clean. Then they go ahead and retest them and retest clean. And they say, okay, now you can go inside the all natural program, which is oh, completely wow. deceiving. Yeah, yeah. Well, so folks out there, you're trying to source appropriately. It's a NE program. Never, ever. Never, ever. Okay, and since, since we're in, in that vein, I would really like to talk a little bit about Certified Humane because a lot of people are, are very curious about that. Can you tell us more, a little bit about being Certified Humane? Yeah, so um, about what, three, four years ago, maybe even five years ago, we, we were trying to source um, a third-party audit, right? A third-party audit because um, a lot of the, the larger accounts that Nyman Ranch has, they offer, you know, uh, they want to know about more certifications. Mm -hmm. So we went out and we tried to find the most hard, stringent, uh, certified uh, that we can. And that would be certified humane. So when we did, we were already doing well over and beyond what certified humane, you know, all their protocols. So we met and surpassed that very easy from day one. So we were always from day one, from the inception mm -hmm. of nine We've always been cert. We've always been humane. We just went out and got a certification. I see. So that's pretty much y your um, stance at Nyman about how you treat animals um, if, as they're being raised for this process. Like they're being they're being treated humanely above and beyond, probably for yeah. absolutely uh, for this we, purpose. Right. Yes, we put deep protocols uh, into our system. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. what's wonderful about Nyman Ranch and, 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 you know, some of our sister companies as well is that most of the VPs actually go back to a ranch. They go back to their farm. They actually live this life. Yeah. So, you know, we have people in the leadership that live it, breathe it. They know what they're talking about. They experience yeah. everything that our family farmers and ranchers do because they're one of them, you know. Uh, and to have that, uh, those folks leading the way is just tremendous because they know what they're talking about. 
That's right. Nyman Ranch believes that the quality of an animal's life impacts the quality of the meat. And that is a fact, 100% fact. I know you're getting ready to move on um, to this um, underblade, right? Yeah. So but, here but, I at the underblade. I'm just kind of cleaning up things. I'm going to try to expose as much as I possibly can and show you okay. guys uh, some of the different cuts. And, you know, you, right. can, you can totally cook this whole as well, just this underblade, you know. Um, I got two. I have two quick questions though before you okay. move on to the underplay. Number one, someone wanted to know why did you tie the roast. Um, Connie wants to know why did you tie the roast um, in the last cut. Oh, because, um, well, because to show you that this can be a roast. <laughs> uh huh. Um, also, I mean, it's just a habit. I, I get a roast, I tie it. Plus, also, gang, you know, when you tie a roast and uh, when you go to cook it, it helps it keeps the shape evenly. Yeah, it keeps, okay, got that, awesome. And Cassandra wants to know about how much would it cost to get this whole cut of beef that you have? If she wanted to do all of these cuts at home and buy this 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 beef, what's the price for it, price point? That's a very good question. I, I can't really be uh, totally accurate at that. I mean, uh, is the, okay, so is it the whole roast, uh, the whole chuck eye, if she were to go to a butcher shop and they'd want to- Yeah. And they'd charge it for a whole for a whole roast? I mean, yeah, potentially. Whole, yeah, what would it maybe a hundred, two hundred, three hundred? I would have to say close to a hundred bucks at least. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's good to know. That's a lot of dinner for a hundred bucks, um, Cassandra. I hope you, if you do it, girl, invite me over because I want some. Um, all right. So we got this. Uh, we got this underblade ready to go. Yeah. Um, while you're okay. while you're cutting the 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 cut, while you're doing the cuts, will you kind of tell us where they got their names? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I already told okay, you about, um, about the about the uh, Demonico, the Chuck. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to show you this. So uh, on the other blade, and, and and as I go throughout, I'll let you know where where these cuts and how they're named. But most of these cuts, honestly, I mean, they're named by the beef board. So when I did some okay. research about you know who named who what, and was there a specific person who named this cut? Uh, no, there, I, I couldn't find it. So really, it just came out to be a general thing of what the meat board, and they came out to find different cuts, and they're the ones that kind of made it. Okay, that's cool. That's good to know. Okay, so right now, I want to show you something. So okay. this cut right here, right here, mm -hmm. this is actually uh, the hump part of the cow. So when it comes down from the neck, and you know that little hump? When you see on the cow, right here, this muscle right here is, is it. And um, I always think that's kind of neat. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah, and when I get to it, um, I usually use in, in butcher shops, we usually use this for like, uh, definitely for stew, uh, definitely a, a braising action, and also uh, for cube meats, like cube steaks, chicken fried steak, all that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of separating it from the muscle. All right. I'm just following the seam. That's all I'm doing. And how many cuts are we gonna get out of this? About uh, out of the whole, about 12 different cuts we can get. All right. Okay. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you fly through it. Go for it. It's all yours. All right. This is Michelle's so, show. Go. Yeah. So <laughs> this one here. Is usually for yeah cube steaks stew. I love cube steak. It's my favorite. My yeah, grandmother used to make like cube steak and gravy. Yeah, very nice. nice. Yeah, and then I'm gonna get this steak right here. Now this steak here, right here, is called the Sierra. And like you know, you you want to just follow the seam. You see, you can pull a lot of it out with just your fingers and just follow it. Just follow it down. It'll right. tell you exactly where you want to go. You I'm starting to really love that about meat, that it kind of guides you if you just follow. That's very cool. Yep. I also love the Sierra name for a steak. That's, it, it sounds just really um, chic. A Sierra cut. <laughs> a Sierra. I'm gonna start going to the butcher asking for all the cuts. Like, no, no, give me Delmonico's Sierras. That's it. 
All right, so we got a Sierra cut coming out. We have a cube steak, great. Now, the Sierra also, and then I'm gonna expose this, is also uh, like the, the chuck flank. Okay. Also called like the chuck flank. So this, this muscle, this particular muscle, hey, you got to cook high and fast, okay? And medium rare. Uh, don't try, try not to go over medium rare on this cut, because, um, okay. yeah, and, and it also needs to be mar in marinade, goes very well. Also, you would need to tenderize this. Get it on the tenderizer because it is kind of tough, you know? So we're yes. Awesome. And as okay. you can see, I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit and exposing. See how the muscles are running? Mm hmm Very muscular. That's why it needs some, some marinating to kind of tenderize it a little bit, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And you want to get as much as these the little silver skin off as possible on this cut. Okay. And then I'm at, you know you want to save all the trim too. Of right? course, that's that's we're gonna save everything. We're gonna respect this animal and save all the bits. Just that's so right. you have a time time stamp, chef. We've got about eight minutes. Awesome. Yeah. Timing. I'm yeah. so hungry now. I don't care how many times we do this. Whenever you're cutting, I'm like, I'm ready for some. You know, I, you know when I first started butchering um, Sierra steak, um, I thought it was really therapeutic. I loved it. You know, just talking, just cutting meat and talking to the uh, people and stuff. Just like, yeah. Okay. So, so, so the, um, someone asked if the underblade was best for roasting and braising. It seems like most of these cuts are, yeah, a little bit more tough and, and need longer yep. cooking times. Yep, there you true. have it. It's mm -hmm. true. All right, so now I'm gonna get down to meet degree here. Let's go. This goes, Let's do go this. Right, so yes, go time, I love this it. This is uh, great for trim, for burger meat. Okay, so this underblade, AKA the chuck flap, is money meat. Okay, this is like crazy good. So I'm just gonna, uh, this part here that I'm gonna take off is the neck. Oh, well, part of the neck. It, also, you can make this in a roast as well. Grind, mm -hmm. burger meat, uh, chop it up. So if people, some people like to chop this up, make like little taco meat. It's a little chewy, but it has great big uh, beef flavor. Chef, what did you tell me? What cut did you tell me makes great burgers when we were talking the other day? Oh. This, the chuck. The chuck, oh, yeah. okay. It's awesome burgers, the whole thing. It has enough fat back, I mean, it has enough fat in it uh, uh -huh. that it can definitely uh, have a nice juicy burger out of it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to, this is the chuck, the chuck flat, okay, right here. This is in Korea, an Asian um, food, Asian uh, cuisine. This is money. This is mm. everything right here. Mm -hmm. okay. So here you have the Denver steaks, okay? Uh, this you can get boneless, boneless short ribs. You can do calbi. You know, uh, Hawaiians love their calbi. I love my calbi. I love um, my calbi. <laughs> awesome uh, stew meat as well. And, you know, I always also, so there's a thing that I do that is, <laughs> that melts my my eyeballs. Um, I'll I'll braise this down and chill it, you know, mm -hmm. and then I'll cube it, and then I'll deep fry it right quick to get it all kind of crispy. And it is oh. on. I mean, that is just crazy, crazy good. You get that little crisp at the end. Oh man. Okay. When we log off, everybody, we're gonna just meet at Chef Michelle's and have fried beef. Well, these are See long. There. Uh, <laughs> anyway, these are the Denver steaks right here. All right. So I'm just gonna just cut a couple, and I'm just gonna cut some stew meat out of here as well. Just get a couple steaks, right? And yeah. Then let me just also cut some stew meat, and this will hold its shape so nicely. Look at all that crazy marbling. Mm -hmm. and, and this is just choice. I mean, just think about our what our prime would look like. Just oh wow, I can't even. Beautiful. 
crazy yeah, beautiful. About, uh, the consistency of our product, of uh, Nightmare Ranch's products, all, all three, beef, pork, and lamb, the consistency is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you can feel really good about what you're eating and what you're supporting, which is also another thing that I love. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, uh, burnt ends, where the burnt ends burnt come ends, from. Maybe, yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yes. Excellent. So these are all pretty much majority of the cuts that you can have. I mean, you can do a little bit more. I could cut some taco meat if I, you know, here mm -hmm. wanted. But really, I mean, you've got braising. You can do sous vide, some of these things. You can do grilling off of these steaks. Uh, you can chop it up and do chopped meat. You can cook it all up and shred it. I mean, Limitless. look at all the different things you can do out of just this one skew. Pretty cool. That is more than pretty cool. That is extremely cool. Man, this is all the things that I did not remember from culinary school. I know a lot of us are cooks in the room and we just had that one bit of fabrication, but this really was extremely informational. Oh, wow. Like I learned so much. Every time I watch you do this, Michelle, I learn something every time. And I really love your passion for um for Nyma Ranch and the work that you do. And I'm just going to drop a couple of Nyma Ranch facts. But, but you know what? Before I do that, Chef, I just want to know really quickly. Um, I love seeing how every part of the animal was used here. Can you discuss the importance of um, fighting food waste in this career field? Fighting, sorry. fighting food waste. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, I just wish, I just hope that everybody, you know, thinks about what it is that they're doing, you mm -hmm. know, to be very mindful of what it is that they're preparing and to be able to think about um, what are they going to use for all the little trims and stuff, you know? Yeah. Pre-planning, basically. Exactly. To pre-plan yeah. and make sure nothing else goes to waste. Because honestly, every scrap that you have, whether it be whatever kind of protein, you can throw it in your stocks. Most chefs kind of know this, you know, but people at home, mm -hmm. like the regular enthusiasts at home, you know, you can throw this little, these little scraps in stock. You know, you can make roast some bones, you know, pick up a book and learn the basics of making, you know, all your different sauces and stocks and stuff. And you can totally, you know, reuse these uh, items in other, in other applications. So really there's, there shouldn't be really a lot of the food waste going on. I hear that. I hear that. Like, let's let's learn more about our food source and also methodology so that we can use as much as much of the meat as possible. Quickly, before we go, though, will you tell us how you got into butchering? It's a very interesting story I would love for you to share with our friends. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, it, honestly, uh, when the economy tanked, it was back in 2005 or six or seven or one of those years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my partner at the time uh, lost a job and I had to go out and get another job. And I answered an ad about um, butchery. And I was like, yeah, butchery, I, I, you know, I can do this. I can learn a few things. And I've been cooking for quite some time. And I never really learned about butchery, like where all these parts come from and, and all that. I knew how to cook it. I just mm -hmm. didn't know how to butcher it. And so once I did, um, I, I hadn't looked back. Man. I, I absolutely found it just wonderful. I started to learn again. And then I got all crazy into like, you know, all the charcuterie end and the smoking end of it. Uh, so wow. just without cutting meat anymore, it was all about all the wonderful things that you can do with that meat. Like you're talking about all the scraps and stuff like, you know, pâtés and, and head cheese and, and all that. I mean, that is really where you learn how to, you know, put the trims to, to work, make the money work for you. Uh, and, and, and doing that with different types of sausages, making kits and smoking mm. and, you know, all, all kinds of fun things. And yeah, uh, yeah so I, I got to learn about a, a lot of things and uh, I never looked back. It, it was, a, I just started learning again and it excited me. So it's- Well, so you're- therapeutic too. I get a, I get, it's, it's fun. I really enjoy it. Well, I'm so glad that you do. And you're an excellent teacher. We're so grateful um, to have you show us these amazing cuts. I know you're going to label the, label them up for us um, in a little bit. Thank you again. Um, 
we're going to just kind of start to transition over to Chef Anita. I know, you know, we, we have to do a little tech roll. So we're going to, we're going to do that. Thank you, Michelle. That was awesome. Um, Chef Anita. Hello. Okay. I'm so doing, excited. Jenna? I'm good. How are you? I am so excited to be here. I mean, every time we do one of these run throughs and now actually be in here live with all of you, I have so much energy running through me right now. I mean, I hope I can get everything out. Oh, <laughs> you I don't have my you daughter here saying like, mom, reel it in, mommy, reel it in. So yeah. <laughs> I got you. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to flow together. We're going to take all this you. energy from the Thank crowd you. and we're going to flow together. Do you want to just kind of take a minute and tell us a little bit about the recipe, like where it's from, your ingredients, go, Absolutely. it's the Anita show, go. The Anita show. Okay. So clearly we have all this beautiful beef, this chub mm -hmm. from Nyman Ranch. And as I have said in all of my Instagram posts in my own restaurant, when I had my restaurant, anytime I do an event, I make sure and utilize Nyman Ranch. Why? Because I can trust it. I know they're not going to throw me a curveball somewhere. I know I can put it to braise or sear or do whatever it is that I need to do. Put it in marinade, which is what I always do with something mm -hmm. that I'm cooking. I love marinades and chilies and different spices and playing with those spices. And this meat just really, really makes it sing. I don't know how to explain it. And then I had this amazing opportunity a couple of years ago to actually go visit um, one of the farms and uh, do an event with these amazing chefs. And I understood and that mm -hmm. sealed the deal for me. I never looked back. So today we are making a lomo saltado, which is a Peruvian dish. And it is one of my favorite things that we used to make at the restaurant. And people would come in and they're like, oh my God, I don't even understand what you just did there. Well, first of all, <laughs> I'm a ranch. Um, second of all, it is a whole in the way that you cut your vegetables and cut your meat, slice the meat. And then of course, the actual sauce, which is a soy-based sauce. It's got mm -hmm. a little chopped garlic in there, the fish sauce, just a little dash to give it a little extra umami. And then I was able to uh, get some aji amarillo paste, which is what this dish is made for. Yes. And the aji amarillo, um, a lot of people describe it very citrusy. It does have a little bite, a little heat, but nothing over the top. And you just whisk in the paste in there, or if you can actually find yourself the actual pepper, mm -hmm. by all means, Use it. Use one whole pepper in this lomo saltado. What else I have going on here is um, I actually use acilla peppers. I'm not the biggest fan of green pepper. Mm -hmm. Something about it just kind of muddles the flavors for me. Acilla mm -hmm. pepper has this really beautiful textural, textural difference from the red pepper and a flavor difference as well mm -hmm. that really, really makes this meal really, really beautiful. I also have some sliced yellow onion and plum Roma tomato, one that I just quartered. And that's it, that's gonna be going in later because again, texture is another key component to making a really beautiful dish. Now, as you saw while uh, Chef Michelle was talking, I came over here and I put my wok. I do this in a wok. If you use a salt okay. pan, of course, you can. Uh, but I love the wok because it allows me to use the whole pan while I'm making this dish. Now okay. at my restaurant, I had I had an incredible amount of BTU. So I was able to fire this from top to finish in like three, four minutes, no problem. Sure. But in a regular home, you mm -hmm. wanna make sure and get that pan screaming hot. So okay. with those vegetables and the meat, I pre-cooked some French fries. That's my favorite These part. fries are actually, I know. When I found this out, I was like, wait, what? You need to explain this to me again. <laughs> because I, I couldn't really wrap my head around it. But somewhere on down the line, um, when this dish was created, uh, Peruvians, of course, they're known for their potatoes. They have over 1,200 different species of potato wow. alone. It's incredible. So when this dish was um, first thought up, it was served with the meat, side of rice, or side of potatoes, mm -hmm. either boiled, roasted, and then French fries came into play later on down the line. And then someone decided to just throw the fries in there and toss everything. So that's what makes it really, really that's amazing. That's pretty genius. And, you that's pretty really, genius. and I love the history of food. And it's so much information that I would literally take up all my time just talking about it here. 
Look it up mm -hmm. on Google. Just look up the origins of the lomo saltado. The lomo saltado being the loin saltado, meaning yes. getting tossed. So it's a really cute play on words as well. So I came over here to uh, kick up my temperature. Now I'm going to kick mm -hmm. it on up to high. I'm going to put on the hood. Okay. It'll get smoky in here. But um, if it's a problem, please let me know. I think we're good. So, okay, good. And I'm going to be serving this with a little steamed rice on the side. Uh, actually, okay. I'm actually going to put it on the bottom because I love, love when the sauce and everything just gets all ooey gooey on top of that rice. It's sensational. You, you guys need to try it. And I, I hope can't you wait. are out there. And if you are cooking with me today, I wish I had a glass of wine because, man, you got to have some music going. That's wine right. Wine while you're cooking. Enjoy yourself. And if you don't have all of the ingredients, it's okay. Just think outside of the box a little bit. Think about your flavor profile and add what you have in your refrigerator. Make have fun with it. It's all good. Oh, gosh. I, so, I love that. See, yes. I, you can see my wok. Can you hear me okay still? Yeah, I good? can hear you well. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. My wok is starting to steam up here. I'm going to add is a there, little bit there, more oil. Okay. I was just going to ask you if there was some oil in there. It looks pretty shiny. Yes. I do a little base coat. And then I swirl okay. it around and then I put the actual amount that I'm going to need for the actual sauteing part. Awesome. Just so okay. my oil doesn't burn, you know, you mm -hmm, want to mm -hmm. use a good vegetable oil. I'm using a canola oil right now. Okay. And I am going to be starting off with my steak here. And I am going to just put it down around the base okay so it's all it's touching the surface there's no meat stacked on top of each other right it's no. all touching the surface exactly exactly okay. and that's key you want that meat to get a really nice char on it and even though i am going to be using a soy based sauce i mm -hmm. still salt it and pepper it you want to develop that flavor from all the way down and uh, a little tip too, a little pro tip. Add a little bit of water to your soy sauce if it's not a low sodium soy. It'll help you from making it too coinly salty or, you know, mm. it, gets, it gets like this really metallic flavor if it gets over reduced. Got so it. That's, that's a, a good pro tip. tip. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's good to know. Also, very important, as I always tell my daughter, salt from the top. It coats everything. Ah, you don't. You did that so fast. Up. You did that so fast, girl. Salt Bay ain't got nothing on you, Chef Anita. <laughs> yes. Okay. So now I want to show you, if you can see, the meat is starting to brown really nicely. I can see that. I'm going to give that a little toss. Okay. Just like that. I'm going to keep the beef on the bottom. Okay. And start adding my vegetables around the top. I love that. Danny thinks we need to have a Bobby Flay rematch. I absolutely agree. You know what? Before this whole COVID nonsense happened, I was looking to get back there. I, I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> I, I think we're going to flood his inbox and we're going to demand that you come back and, and, and he actually it. take take the beating he denied the last time <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, you, all right i see a little okay. tossing of it yeah you see that coming up really oh, nice up to temp. now i'm just gonna let that sit for a minute okay the thing that we all make is as soon as we put something down to sear and get a nice let the pan yeah. do its magic just you know keep an eye on it if it starts to smell like it's going a little soft down your heat then flip it, you know, do whatever it is you need to do, adjust. But make sure and give it okay. that hard sear. Now, I'm going to put in my tomatoes. Again, textural difference. I don't want my tomatoes to break down completely. Okay. Give that a toss. And now, we add a little bit of soy sauce. Building flavors. Oh. I love it. Ooh, the smell. Come on, guys. Oh. I'm gonna let I wish we had a smell of vision. No, I do too. Seriously. <laughs> and now fries. All right, Just let's go. Fries. 
Let's go. And now we just give it another toss. Make sure and coat those fries really nice. And then finish with parsley. There we go. Uh -huh. Now while that goes, I'm gonna start building my plate. I have my steamed rice here. Very nice. <laughs> Plus my wok. I know it's doing what it's supposed to right now. It's reducing that sauce beautifully. So I don't have to worry about it. I can build my plate really nicely. And when you're making your and rice, uh, make sure not to get it too mushy because again, textural difference. Mm -hmm. Michelle, I mean, Anita, Anita, your sister is here and she says she loves you and you're fantastic. Oh my God. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. I'm seriously <laughs> gonna cry. Oh my god, it's with sister Michelle. Hi, baby. Yes, Michelle you? is here. She says you're fantastic, and I'm like, we know that's why we got her here. Oh my uh, god, but she's showing you love, and I just wanted you to know. Thank you, Chef. Thank you so much for doing that. I'm seriously gonna cry. I tried to go the whole thing without crying, and apparently, it's not gonna <laughs> happen. This is a safe so space. Now, tears, tears, and emotions are welcome. Yeah, and hunger. Man, this smells good. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so that looks great. We finish great. it with a little extra. And there we go. There is your mole hasano, guys. I'm going to bring her over here so you can get a better view. Oh, come on. Let's go over to the, um, the smell of vision camera. There oh, that go. looks amazing, Chesanita. Yeah, that looks beautiful. We have quite a few questions about it. Can we ask you some questions? Okay, okay so for for one, you mentioned that oh. it's cool to use whatever is in your um whatever's in your refrigerator yes. to kind of make this. Like what would you say? Like if I had some things, name some things I could I could kind of sub if I needed to. Like what kind of peppers can I sub with? <laughs> Definitely. Hi, I keep going back and forth. It's okay. Um, you, anyone you choose is perfectly fine. Okay. Um, well, I've used all kinds of peppers in this. I've definitely done shishito peppers. I've okay. done peppers, orange peppers, sea jazz. Um, I have used jalapenos because oh, wow. I like okay. heat. And then when mm -hmm. I want to emulate that ahi, I use actually a little habanero but I devein it so it's not so hot. So you can definitely okay. play with this. You can play around with it a lot. And then I could also use like <laughs> other, uh, <laughs> Michelle, are you threatening to eat our demo food before we're done? So, <laughs> so we could put any kind of potatoes in there also, right? Like like you yes. said, we could boil, we could steam, well, right? I, I would tell you not to use a boiled potato unless you okay. part cook it in a salty water and then finish it to roast in the oven because Got it'll it. break down too much for you. It needs to have uh, a little a little crisp to it. Okay, so a little crisp on the outside, a little pillowy on the inside. So exactly. an oven roast would probably be better. Okay, yes. that makes that makes all the sense. Um, okay, so I mean, since we have you both here, I'll see, people are very grateful for the alternative pepper suggestion. That's really great. Um, yeah. Since I have you both here, I have some some questions that um, either of you can answer or both. Um, before I do that, I do want to drop a couple of more um, of my favorite Nyman Ranch facts. Um, Nyman Ranch meats are prized and served by many of the country's top chefs looking for delicious meat raised responsibly. Um, discerning home chefs are lucky that Nyman Ranch is also available at select grocery stores. I saw a lot of questions about where you could get uh, Nyman Ranch meat. Um, so across the country, you can get it at, at, at grocery stores um, and you can have restaurant quality meals at your dinner table, just like this beautiful Lomo Saltado, which I'm definitely making for dinner this weekend. Um, and so with that said, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, have as as women working in the meat sector, this is more for Chef Michelle. Um, have you faced any challenges? Um, and because it's a field obviously mostly male dominated as with most of the culinary um, industry, have you had any challenges um, coming up along the ranks? Um, me personally, 
Um, <clears throat> fortunately, as far as butchering is concerned, I didn't have really any any issues. Um, okay. I do know that there have been friends of mine that have had issues before, but you know what, gay? Um, you know, if you go in with passion, okay, and mm -hmm. you really want to learn something, whether it be cooking in the chef world or butchering, you know, go in full blown, be confident. You know, even yeah. if you don't have a bunch of, of experience, you want to go in there and you want to show your best. You want to like say to the guy, hey, you know, is there a position available? If not, hey, if you really love that butcher store, like they're doing some wonderful things, you know, things that you can learn from big time, then stodge. Definitely work for free. Right. Show how much you really want to learn and they'll overlook most things because you know uh i think most chefs would rather have someone who's extremely passionate who doesn't mm -hmm. have who's a blank cabinet okay and they can get a hold of them and mold them beautifully you know that's what something that you know personally i i would like i would want somebody who had a lot of passion uh for what it is that they want to learn and then you yeah. just sculpt them you just sculpture them nicely so basically what you're saying is to hell with the with the naysayers and the roadblockers, keep yep. moving forward. Yeah, you I'll take that. Do you, do yeah. you, you never mind. You know, that's just, you know, that's just not that you just go right through it. You just go right go through it. Go right through it. That's you know, right. Just keep on going, bro. That's it. Yeah. I got two really important questions come in through the the, the chat. One of them is um about the Sierra steak. Um, and can it be cooked like a flank steak? Well, yes, it can. Okay, so it resembles, but listen, this is a tougher piece of meat. It must be through like a, a tenderizer, throw it to a tenderizer or tenderize yourself or score it. Um, mm -hmm. And it needs to be something that's very, very hot, very fast and, and swift. And then also, you know, you want to cut this against the grain, definitely on a 45 degree angle so that, you know, the eating ability is really nice and soft and tender. Okay, excellent. Um, can we talk a little bit just really briefly about like food safety and sanitation as it relates to meat? Is it different than like what we learn in the regular culinary world about food safety and sanitation or is it, are the rules pretty much the same? Uh, in my experience, I always carry the same standard across the okay. world, whether All I'm right. working with beef. Uh, I mean, definitely if I'm working with chicken, there's an element of extra, you know, be careful, make sure nothing touches. But I'm that way with everything I'm working with. Different colored uh, cutting boards, like these red ones, that's meat specific only. Green ones for vegetables, yellow for chicken, white for fish. Never ever cross contaminate that because you never know what small bacteria is sitting in there. And the second it hits the surface, you're going to mm -hmm. put that into your region. So definitely safety first make sure and you know wash your hands you know if you're defrosting something make sure and run it under cold water don't just mm -hmm. let it sit out you know it it's definitely something to look into there's you know brochures out there that can help you and definitely storing even in your own refrigerator if you've got vegetables here don't put chicken next to it again you can get that cross contamination so but yeah. with this and to, yes and to, to add to that you know um a wonderful thing is the HACCP program so, mm -hmm. hazard, you know, hazard analysis, critical control points, HACCP. Yes. Yeah. And when you get into those type of programs, you know, usually larger companies um, will have these all in place because it's a safety factor, right? Food, foodborne mm -hmm. illness and all that. So it sure. makes you study, it makes you learn all the temperature danger zones, you know, between 40 and 140. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, you're supposed to have, um, you know, sanitation buckets with the proper, you know, the, the uh, towels and such and the sanitation sprays and everything. So a good rule of thumb really is to refer back to your HACCP program. Or if you don't have one, get one. Thank you, Michelle. I was trying to think of the words. <laughs> that's exactly what I was speaking of. There is Awesome. Okay, that's good to know. Danny put that in the chat about the HACCP program. Can I ask you, do you or should you be also serve safe certified if you are working with meat? Is that is that a certification that applies here? Yes. Absolutely. All right. In California, you have to be. If you're mm. working in the food service industry, period, 
That means butchers yes. too. You got to get certified. Wonderful. That's good to know. Just so you all know, um, by winter, She Chef will be offering um, Serve Safe courses and we will be able to administer the exam. So we will be able to proxy. I'm really excited about that. So if you're interested, please feel free to reach out and we'll put you on our on our list. Um, let's see. Um, okay, I have a couple more questions. Oh, someone wanted to know, and I think this is an excellent question. What is some of the best career advice that each of you have been given? Uh, yeah, I gotta um, think about this one. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we've been here a long time. You get a lot. Of, yeah, you get a lot of different advice at different stages. So I think this that's, is um, that's so true. That's so true. Mm -hmm. well, one that really sticks with me is um, to be flexible, to be mm -hmm. able to bend with things, not be so stern. Uh, mm -hmm. Years ago, I, I used to be a very strict uh chef no you, I, this is i it took me time to create this this is how i want it to be eaten this is how it's supposed to be no substitutions nothing like that right um right you you know a, a lot of folks don't understand what the chef goes through to be able to create the dishes that they do and mm -hmm. take the time enough to know how they want you to eat it how they want you to experience their meal that you right come in and experience. And so, you know, uh, that was something really uh, monumental for me because as soon mm -hmm. as my friend told me that, man, the stress level went down big time. So that was one that was really big for me. Okay, that's great advice. Be flexible, guys. You just never know. Things need to change. You got to be able to roll with the punches. Good advice. What about you, Chef Anita? Well, I have worked for some amazing chefs in this country and I've had the great fortune of being able to have done that and out of every place I have felt that I have definitely come out pushing forward no matter what never taking no for an answer that was the first thing I was told mm -hmm. don't take no for an answer keep pushing yeah but along the way I have noticed and it's like at the start of this uh virtual um I have so many ideas going through my mind. I've always been like that since I was a kid. And at every place that I have worked at, all of my chefs have said to me, girl, will you just focus? Stay focused. <laughs> Somehow, uh, all of the noise in my brain and all of the menu ideas that I have uh, at four o'clock in the morning, um, one of my chefs, uh, Paul Verant in Chicago, I, his sous chef told me to keep a little notebook on the side of my bed. And mm -hmm. I do that. So I'll wake up like at three, four in the morning and I start jotting stuff down. It drives my husband crazy, but he then gets to eat the creation. So, you there know, you it's have it. but most recently, um, one of my unofficial mentors, uh, Thomas Keller, who I consider just really amazing uh, to talk to, uh, he specifically said, stay focused, girl. And mm -hmm all about evolution. So echoing what Michelle has said, don't stay within that lane when you're trying to become a chef. I feel like you miss out on a lot. Be able to pivot a little bit, still keep focus, mm -hmm. pivot. never stop learning ever, 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 ever. I love how you just casually said, you know, when I talk to and get advice from Thomas Keller, <laughs> You know, when we're just having our little one-on-one -on -one chat the street, during the like, week, right? Down to her restaurant. <laughs> I love it. Just, you know, whenever me and Tom are <laughs> chopping it up. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I do have to give him a big shout out because I've been through quite a bit emotionally during the break of the closing up. My Absolutely. I had several breakdowns, a couple of which she heard over the phone, you know, and so. it's just, <laughs> he was there as not just supporting me, but his whole community, the whole community of Yonko, of Napa, he was there. He was pushing for all of us, small restaurants and working with, you know, the people that he has and the charities and being able to just be a voice for us. It's tremendous. So I am truly grateful to him. So yes, when he stops and sits and speaks with me and yells at me about something, I'm going to listen. Right, right. Absolutely. I know how that is. You know, the best mentors are just a little hard on you, but very tender with you when you need it. 
That's yes. what the best mentors do. Um, all right, let's see. What career advice would e- would each of you give to a young person pursuing a career in um, in food or meat sector? One one good piece of advice. What would you say? One good piece of advice. How about two? <laughs> okay. One from each. I mean, we need all the advice we can get out here. So I'm really not going to put a cap on it. Give us what you got. Well, definitely as a young chef or a sh- anyone wanting to be a chef, just put your head down, be focused, keep pushing mm-hmm. forward. Let your desire to accomplish and succeed take you there. Never take no for an answer. Just Yeah, keep- that's my, that's my number one. Yeah, leave, leave, learning. leave with your passion, leave yeah. with your heart. You know, people mm-hmm. recognize right off the bat when you are very passionate about what it is that you want to learn or what it is that you're doing. You know, that really comes through. And when that comes through, you are being authentic. And when you are authentic, man, you are on a roll. There is nobody that can stop you. You are in your role, you are in your lane, you are going for it. So like well, you said. What? What do you think, though, when when someone when when we do that and someone says, oh, stay in your lane or slow down or, you know, like, how do you leave with passion? Move aside. You're you're in my way. You're in my way. You're in my spot, man. I'm going to take your spot. I'm going to take your spot. Absolutely. I use it as I actually write down whatever negative comments I perceive in my career. I write them down and I use them as fuel. And I never let them keep me down because, yeah. hey, I'm here talking these, with you, aren't I? These are, <laughs> these are so many jewels. So we have keep a notebook by your side so you can write down your thoughts because a lot of us are extremely creative. Um, that's very good advice. I still have all of my old small notebooks from every restaurant, every catering company, from culinary school. I've kept all of them and they just, they make really good things to kind of, you know, go back to when you're trying to remember something or when you just like need, need to remember why you got into it. Sometimes visiting the old thing really helps you kind of stay empowered towards the new. Um, The second thing is to tap into your mentors, especially when you're having some trying times. You're not in it alone and you don't have to be. You have Chef Anita, you have Chef Michelle, you have She Chef, you have myself, you have Danny Dillon at Lunch Group. The resources are limitless. You're never in it alone. And Mm -hmm. finally, when people are telling you that you're being overzealous and you're being too ambitious, you tell them kindly, step aside. You are in the way of reaching my goals. And my favorite, favorite lesson of tonight so far, because it's one that I too practice, I never take no for an answer. To me, no means maybe, no means later, no means <laughs> no means not, not now, but next time, but no, never right. ever means no. Um, and, and, you know, you can, you create your own destiny. So I see a lot of people in the chat who still have their notebooks from culinary school in in 98. Like, I love that. That is that is so great. Like little. No, even if you're not in the food world, maybe maybe you're more corporate than creative or maybe you're corporate creative. Having a notebook by your side is really good. I use the notes in my phone anytime I have an idea, anytime I just need to remember something that might not be of immediate use. Um, You know, I just always have it written down. and Danny just brought up a really good, um, a really good note from our conversation with Clancy. Um, she said, Clancy says that you should reach out to many people for just a conversation. You'd be surprised at how open people are, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's, I believe that's how mentorship works. And I, I like what you said, Chef Anita, about having an unofficial mentor. I have lots of unofficial mentors, right? Like um, people who I have just like one-off conversations with, you know, or you know, I would consider like Chef Michelle one of my like unofficial mentors. She's someone that I would always see representing Nyman Ranch. I could always ask her about something that had to do with the company. She always had the best facts about meat in general. You know, like a, a mentorship doesn't have to be a six month relationship or even a six day relationship. Sometimes it's just a six hour, six minute conversation, you know, like taking jewels away kind of makes it like a mentorship opportunity, you know, like but that. also jewels away. That's, that's, that's a nice word. Taking yeah. jewels. 
nice. Yeah, you're taking jewels. There's no rules to mentorship. Mentorship can look like whatever you need it to look like at the time. Um, Plus, I think it's important, Elle, that, you know, uh, women in general help each other, lift mm -hmm. each other, yeah. bring each other up, you know, yeah. mentor each other, cultivate each other, teach each other, you know, bring, bring together, you know, uh, to, to elevate, you know, and to share. That's, yeah. That's, you know, that's because... So many years, men have been doing that, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the boys club, how, however, you know, you want to say that. But we as women um, have been doing a very good job of that early on. But, you know, in the past 10, 15 years, we certainly have come a long way from where we have been. So yeah. it's like groups like WCRs, it's, it's groups like yours, she, she Chef, uh, that really help and, and others that really help bring and network women together, elevating each other, you know, um, That's right. elevating each other and, and not letting them say, no, I can't. Yeah. Or even just, you know, feeling extremely competitive in a way that you can't help another woman. Like there's room at the table for everyone, you know, that proverbial table. There's always something that can be done. There's a place for all of us. So, you know, that we don't, we don't have to be we don't have to be competitive over the spots. Like there's room for everyone. Um, some really good questions that came about and, and I also would love to know the answers to these. We would like to know what's next for you chefs. What Tell us what things you have coming up. How can we support um, your endeavors? Um, Chef Anita, especially you, we really want to lift you. Tell us, you know, chefs, what's going on with you guys and how can we support you beyond today? <laughs> oh, that mean, I, that means something good is going on. That look at each other and then the giggles. Tell me, yeah, tell me what's going really on. Looked at me and said, "Don't cry." I'm like, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. I realize that, but every time I tear up, it, I just always remember the beginning and the reason why I chose to open my restaurant in Yonko. And you know, my husband's name was number one part that had to do with that. I did all the work, but he was the one that opened up my eyes the possibility mm -hmm. of who I could be. And he's always cultivated that. He's always been there for me. He's the best dishwasher on the planet. My old chef, Holly, uh, you know, Chicho called him 3P for a third pan because he didn't know what a third pan was. And she needed a third pan. And he was like, what is she talking about? So, you know, it's just little things like that. Um, for me, uh, right now, I don't know where I'm going from here other than I'm still doing my private dinners for small groups. Mm -hmm really beautiful stuff, you know, stuff that I've always wanted to do, maybe couldn't because I was busy running a restaurant. I want to travel. I'm double vaccinated now. So I'm going on a beautiful road trip with my daughter uh, this coming weekend and then heading over to Puerto Rico to see my family. So from there, I don't know. I'm just going to keep working what I'm doing and, yeah. doing and we'll see where I land. Well, you know, Chef Anita, there's a light about you that um, lets me know that your path is already lit ahead of you. I'm glad that you're having this opportunity to spend time with your family and, and take road trips, you know, because those things are equally as important. And sometimes I think I've learned that if we, if we aren't, if we are too busy to hear what the universe is telling us to do, sometimes the universe will just shift us in that direction, whether we really are expecting it or wanting it to or not, right? But it always leads us to a thing that we actually really, really need. Because you know what? You know what you've already done once? Open a restaurant. So you know what that means? If you ever wanted to do it again, you know how to do it. You know what to do. Yeah, you know, like it's you could do it anytime, as many times as you want, and it's going to be successful every single time. So I think right now is the time to do what you want to do on your own time. Um, if there's if there ever is like a link, or you know, if you do a GoFundMe, whatever you're doing, please make sure you let us know, and we will be sure to be running it through our socials and supporting it 100. percent We're going to hire you. For, I'm actually going to come to Napa. <laughs> I have a birth I have a wintertime birthday coming up and I'm always like, what am I gonna do for a winter That's birthday? Us. Bring the yes. shell. I mean, soon everybody, like just come to my house, I have a beautiful little backyard. I'll cook you my food from my, oh my gosh. From my people. I'm coming. Puerto Rican people, Boricua in the house. Hello, people. 
I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> There's 60 of us here in this room right now. You just invited 60 people to your house. <laughs> all people. I hope you're ready for that. I hope you're ready. Okay. Uh, that's, that's so exciting. Chef Michelle, tell us about what you're doing for Nyman Ranch and where we can expect to see you post pandemia. What, what's going to happen? What's going on? Well, you know, I, I am so fortunate to be a part of this wonderful organization and they are utilizing me just everywhere where I'm going to have some fun at. Uh, so right. uh, it's wonderful to be able to speak to chefs that I, I, I have been. Uh, it's, it's great once travel is coming back, uh, mm -hmm. traveling and covering the whole West and the Pacific Northwest. And then also, you know, um, I have a, they gave me a really wonderful special opportunity once a month to teach mindfulness to Nyman Ranch. Uh, you know, it's, it's very special. Um, you know, this, this company is very special. Not a lot of companies do this, take the time to take yeah. care of their people. And I love that. I love that tremendously. Uh, so I, I get to go to some events. You're going to see hopefully a lot of me as I go around to more events and such and, and promote Nyman and, and actually be more of a consultant to the chefs. And, you know, I'm, I'm truly a family farmer advocate. Most of us here at Nyman Ranch really are. You know, these are people who believe in the product, believe in what we do and really have a lot of fun doing it and uh, something to really, truly get behind. So the sky's the limit. I mean, That's right. uh, you know, we're growing as a company and, and I'll just see where it kind of, um, you know, where I fit in. Well, you're getting a lot of love in the chat from your Nyman team. I feel the very same way about you. Thank you so much, chefs. It was so great having this conversation, cooking with you. Um, thank you for making my dreams come true. You really, oh God, don't. I'm going to cry. I'm going to do a Chef Anita. You really made my dreams come true. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand this over to my wonderful co-founder, Shamir. Um, just really quickly, I want to just give a very quick, 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 special, special thank you to Danny Dillon and Lunch Group. Um, also um, to Alicia at Nyman, who, who really just grabbed our hands at She Chef and like really walked with us through this process. Um, to... Um, uh, year goes um, from our ATK family. Um, I'm missing somebody. Um, uh, I'm gonna tell you who it is. Uh, you know, Ernesto. you know Ernesto for holding us down on the tech side and making sure we had it all together. And now I'm done. I'm gonna give it over to Shamir. Thank you so much again. I appreciate you so so much. Thank you, Chef. Well, with that all said, who's ready to barbecue this weekend? Who's ready for some grilling? Because <laughs> if I had a grill, I'd rip it out tonight and just like run to the store real quick and grab a check roll and just everything you guys just did. Thank you so much for everything. You guys rocked it as usual, as we've expected. And I just want to say, this is why we call it culinary arts, because you guys have took your paintbrushes and just did all the strokes tonight. It was super therapeutic and we're just so appreciative. We've all had a week, a work week, and you guys just blew it up with all this high expectation of what's to come. We're all so ready to, uh, to pretty much practice what we've done today. So everyone, please take advantage of all the recipes that you've learned. Take advantage of all this information you learned. Take your screenshots. We'll most likely send you recordings. This is unlikely what you're going to receive from any other butcher you'll ever meet if you get to meet your butcher. This is like a once in a lifetime chance to get to know this information, to know where your meat is coming from. You can get Nyman Ranch products from the mail, throughout the mail. Don't forget your swag bag that you'll be receiving, all the lucky ones that got their tickets early. Take advantage of those tools. And uh, most importantly, thank you to America's Test Kitchen and Nyman Ranch. You guys are just spectacular for helping us get to this level. And uh, uh, also, please give us your feedback, what we've missed, what you'd like to see in the future. We do have more camps coming up. We have this beautiful partnership with Nyman Ranch. So look out for more information with us, She Chef and Nyman Ranch projects. Also look out for our She Chef community on IG where we provide more opportunities for our community members as well as uh, more working opportunities for the 
community members. We have a lot of things coming up for you guys. And um, we also have highlights of chef, women chefs that we do every other day. So look out for more mentors, more potential mentors, more guidance from us. And we really appreciate you. Thank you so much, uh, Chef Michelle, Chef Anita. We are just in love and we just don't, don't leave us. Just keep us like this. No, we just, this is an addictive relationship. We all love food and we all love to just be friends and be together. They're on the East. Well, sorry, we're on the East coast. They're on the West coast. And this union that we've had tonight with everyone involved, we're all hungry. I just wish we could just eat this food together. You know, that would be great. And most importantly, Chef Anita, I honestly think that everyone should try to make this meal for their dad. That is like a dad dish for Thank fathers. Oh my up. Gosh. That is so incredible because every time I make this dish, other than the onion, somehow I think of my father. Yes, uh, it's definitely flavors that he would have loved. He hated onions, though. He didn't like cooked onions. <laughs> he didn't do it. The French fries, the steak. Yeah. The you, know, you, got meat, you got potatoes, you got rice. And I mean, he would just love that. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so let's do that, everybody. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, you have a great weekend. Have Enjoy your Thursday. Team She Chef out. Team Nyman Ranch out. Thank you yes, so much. Guys.